In the most recent experimental build, they added conveyor lifts. Here's what they are and why they're going to change the way that we build our factories. So let's go ahead and set one of these up. If we take a look inside of here, it's under the logistics just below the conveyor belts. So we can see that they have the same mark versions right there and they're the exact same speeds as well. So we have up to four currently and I'm sure five and six will be available at some point, but it's currently not in the game just yet. So you can see that this moves up as predetermined segments to go up higher and lower. They don't necessarily snap to anything up top, so you kind of have to be aware of how that's going to work. And this is still the experimental build, so things may not work uh, as they do here in this current build of the game. So as you can see, there's also a little bit of a weird segment right there. That doesn't seem to matter um, currently, but I'm, I doubt that'll be in the finished product here. But you can see that this is now an output out here. So if I connect that to, let's say, a standout here, because I can't just drop a conveyor in midair, so that's kind of what I have to do. And then I can click again to this, and we can go down with it. But unfortunately, I can't connect right to this conveyor, so I have to get rid of that. So there are some little quirks here that I'm sure will get worked out at some point. But you can see, yes, they go up and they go down as well. So taking that and just connecting it back to the loop here, I'm going to move what is these crystal, these quartz crystals around. So also in this experimental update is the tech tree for sulfur and for the quartz as well. That unlocks things like this buggy right here or this map. Interesting. Not that I want to go over everything here, but if you do ping and then you look at the map, we should see them show up here on the locations. There it is. There's a little bit of coal right there. And there's some more coal. Pretty handy, huh? Let's go ahead and take a look around my factory at a couple of examples of how we used to bring conveyors up and down in the old style now. And so probably my favorite way of bringing conveyors up or down or product up and down on a conveyor is using the spiral, spiral arrangement over here. I mean, this is just cool looking. You can also see uh, big storage containers actually have two inputs and outputs. It's all one storage though. So if we just throw that away, you can see that that'll spiral down. I would like to have a really fast way to make something like this because visually this is really, really cool. Um, but that is not currently what we have, but that is probably my favorite way, even though it takes a long time to build. Another example of how I've run conveyors in the past here that have, it's actually worked out pretty good, is just like what I did over here to go up into this giant storage tower. So that is Chris going back and forth between conveyor stackers. So figuring out what that uh, arrangement is. It's actually an even number and then an odd number and that gets it to stack perfectly. It was actually five and six in this case. So the product in this case flows from bottom all the way up. But as you can see that takes up a lot of space. But man does it look cool. Especially whenever all the product is flowing and everything. Super nice. I've let this thing run for a while, so everything's backed up. But now that we have these lifts, you can imagine that we're just going to have a series of things that run just a bit like this, right? They start in one location, and you can take those and you can just keep going up higher and higher and higher. And it might have a limit. Let's see if I can go a little bit higher than that one. Okay, it does look like there is a global limit to just how tall you can build a conveyor lift. And that is it which is that's pretty stinking tall however i think what you can do is you can actually just connect another one onto it if you want to and then keep going up even further so yeah <laughs> there you go super super tall so quite a bit less sexy but it'll get the job done for sure Here's a good example that I think will be really useful for a lot of us. If you have bus lines like this, where you have a lot of product that's flowing around that's actually quite high, rather than having a big slope, you can just throw that right on there and bring the product right down. And then you have an area where you can get into your storage here and pull this stuff out as needed. So normally this is just running off to a storage facility and then other factories down the line. But you can see right here, I've got a spot where I can, you know, pull a little product out and use it for handcrafting. Now if you've seen my previous videos, this is what I call a spaghetti box over here, where you're just kind of running conveyors back and forth as the product flows up, and then I'm doing all of the manufacturing uh, inside of here on different levels. So wires was happening down here, and then we get more wires, more wires, cables, and whatnot. 
So that's actually going into staters. And this is the most organized vertical production line that I've been uh, I've made to date using the old method. Now let's compare the old method to the new method. In this case, we're going to be looking at rotors. There's the old and there's the new. If that isn't a significant difference, I'm not sure what is. So as you can see, the product flows up here and this is a different method than what we're using previously. So in this arrangement here, I found the best way to work this was to have all the product flowing up on one end and then all of it flows out on the far end. This works differently now in that if you face all of your constructors and assemblers from front to back of the building, so in on this side, out on that side, we tend to work the conveyors flowing up, you know, on, on one side of the building, either the front or the back as need be, you know, as compared to um, side to side like this. So let me show you how that actually works. So you can see I'm just bringing in iron ingots here and that's going to go up here just like this to the second level. And this is where I'm doing the rods. So you can see it just flows in through the wall up here. And then I build this little wall piece because that allows me to kind of connect between here and that uh, lift right there. There's some little quirks of when you're actually working with it. I'm not sure if that's going to all be there by the time it actually gets released into the, into the early access build of the game. So this is like the, the preview of the preview build that we're working with right now. Anyhow, so these rods go out and as you can see, the finished product flows up over there. And just like we would have in a horizontal uh, production line, this line here, all it is is going up, flows across, and then it's going up to the next level. So it really, this all could just be laid out um, horizontally from one end to the other. But in this case, we're just using the lifts to, to stack that on top of itself. So you can see the same ingots flow up here. And this is where I'm making, this is where I'm making screws, our alternative screw recipe. And that flows in, flows in, and then goes over here just like that. And that's where the line ends. And as you can see, the screws are also moving up as well, and they're just moving up side by side like this. So once I get up to the next level, this is where I'm going to be making all of my rotors. You can see those right there. So I have the two product lines flowing in. You can see all of the screws just flying in there and then the rods on top of that and how that actually goes into these two assemblers here to make as many rotors as I can. That then f makes its way up to the top level here and connects in with the old production line that I have right over here. This is stators. So that's where that guy comes in. And then I also have rotors here as well. So these are connecting together to make motors. And then motors find their way out just like this and use a lift to go down. Now one thing you might be asking is can you ride on the lifts? No, you can't. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> it would be cool, but you can't. So you can see we can try it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. Oh, uh, well, and then I'm just storing it up here. So you can see how, how big of a difference, how much cleaner it is to use the lifts, right? Than it is to use the old spaghetti boxes. So I think this, this alone is going to change the way that we build compact vertical assembly lines. And I, I think there's a real reason to do vertical assembly lines. Let me take you to my last example um, and kind of compare it to this example right over here. So over here, I'm just making a bunch of copper ingots, right? So I have a, I have a, a node down there that's pulling the copper out of the ground and then it runs through four smelters and then I run a conveyor line from there. And you can see how much space that takes up. However, some nodes that we have are like in really hard to access areas. You know, this might even be one. There's really not a lot of space. I mean, we could go down there and build it, but now that we have a conveyor lift, we can think about that problem differently. Let me show you what I mean. So what I wanna look for is some quartz. And if I open up the map here, whoop, I know where some good quartz is. It's actually going to be over here because because I've marked it, I have two pure quartz. And there it is on the map. Now I can't set a destination or a waypoint or anything, but uh, I really do like having a map. And there's also a big radar tower that I put up there and that actually will 
work to reveal a certain amount of area that is part of uh, another tech tree that you actually start to research through. So we'll take the Explorer and head on over there. All right, so I'm at my destination here. I've got a couple of pure quartz uh, nodes here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this into the truck station. And you can see that it's going to go through the loading process. Now, one thing I should mention here is that the actual loading process does take a little bit of time, although it, it goes really fast, but uh, it isn't instant. I think it used to be instant, but you can see here, I've decided to solve this problem a little bit differently, and it's all thanks to the conveyor lift and the fact that I can, I can build this in such a small amount of space. Okay, so what's going on here is pretty cool. So I've got a miner over here digging up raw quartz. It then goes through a couple of constructors. I actually have four of them up there. And then that merges down to go to a truck station, which will I'll load up an AGV and ship it to my bases wherever those are. Uh, the reason it's doing that is because it reduces the total amount of volume that it needs to be shipped. So I can move more rather than, you know, just moving the ore right there. And it's really made possible thanks to how, how compact these lifts are. Not that I couldn't have done it before, because I definitely could have, but I'm not sure I would have even, would have even thought to build it like this. Um, because the lifts make it so easy, it opened up, opens up new opportunities of how we could potentially, you know, construct our facilities. And that's what I really do like about it. So, and that's why, that's why I feel pretty strongly that these conveyor lifts are going to change the way that we build um, factories within our, our game. So I'm excited about them. I'm also excited about this new truck and some of the new tech. But if there's one thing that I'm most excited about, it would have to be the vertical conveyor lifts. If you drive into my coal power plant here, you can see that my old way of taking coal up, you know, you can see just how much space that used to take. And you can imagine, you know, just how, how little space it's going to take to move product up now that we have these lifts. And I forgot to mention that you can upgrade conveyor lifts just like you can normal conveyors. So just like this, if I want to upgrade it, just look at it, hover over it, click it, boom, not a problem. So there you have it, guys. It's a simple piece of equipment, but I think it's going to open up a ton of new opportunities of how we're going to build within Satisfactory. Hopefully, guys, are looking forward to it. I am definitely looking forward to building a lot more vertical facilities using this nice conveyor and saving me a ton of time. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar, out.